learn to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the same one that I've had for the last 20 years. It's not to start smoking and not to stop drinking. My New Year's resolution is to be more tolerant of others. My New Year's resolution is to reduce the amount of single-use plastics that I use and buy. My New Year's resolution is to use my phone less. My New Year's resolution is not to take anything for granted and to treasure family and friends. My New Year's resolution is not to buy any more craft stuff. My New Year's resolution for 2021 is not to forget 2020 and when things get back to normal, not to take the little everyday things that we value so much for granted anymore. Things like 
meeting friends, going for a coffee, going to the shops in town, that sort of thing. Um, I think it would be a good thing to remember. Um, on a more serious note, I must resolve to limit my intake of chocolate. My resolution is to learn all my times tables. Hi there, my New Year's resolution is to go on an overland journey to Kathmandu, preferably by motorbike. My New Year's resolution is to read more. My New Year's resolution is to spend more time with my family. My New Year's resolution is to be more active. My New Year's resolution is to be compassionate to others. My New Year's resolution this year is to spend more quality time with my wife and family. So my New Year's resolution is a little strange for me. It's going to be spend more time travelling. Um, I want to do more running. I want to get under 60 minutes for 10 kilometres and have fun. My New Year's resolution is to walk 10,000 steps every day. When Sarah asked me about New Year's resolutions, I panicked a little bit. I don't usually do them. Um, in the past, I've set myself goals and not achieved them and felt quite depressed. Uh, so I've, I've kind of ignored New Year's resolutions for a while. But I did come across this um, piece of advice, I think, would probably be the best way to describe it, from a friend um, that I thought I'd share, because this seems a bit more achievable. It's called Gentle Goals for a New Year. Learn something new. Tell people you love them. Set healthy boundaries. Get outside when you can. Be truthful. Read good books. Sing in the shower. Allow your feelings to breathe. Be delighted by the small things. Take responsibility. Practice seek, seeing goodness. Speak kindly to yourself. Spend time being lazy. Remember your dreams. Stay compassionate and hopeful. And I thought that was a really good set of things to try and achieve during the coming year. Well, a very happy new year to you, the beginning of this 2021. And this last year has been quite a tough year, hasn't it? And that song that we just sung, all about God blessing us or us blessing God, 10,000 reasons and maybe there are things that you're struggling to think about how you can give thanks to God today but as we journey together at the beginning of this new year there is so much that we can be thankful for even with the difficulties that we have faced in these last nine or ten months and I hope that you're able to join with us as we journey through this service together and it's a good opportunity for us to be able to share together as a church family at the beginning of this new year. So uh, if you've not joined us before here at St Andrew's Church in Hortlesgurn in Darlington in the northeast of England, you're very welcome to join us, and particularly at the beginning of this new year on this first Sunday in 2021. And we're gonna to say together now a prayer which uh, reminds us of, of how we can put our trust in God uh, at the beginning of this new year. And this will appear on the screens um, just uh, next to, to me in a moment. So if you'd like to join with me in this prayer as we start together. So let us pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for this new year. Help us to trust you with everything that lies before us. Keep us loving and obeying you so that your name is honoured and glorified in our lives. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Isn't that a lovely prayer that we're asking God to be with us at the beginning of this new year? And in a moment, we're going to say a, a creed together to, if you like, dedicate ourselves at the beginning of this new year as we journey together. So let us declare our belief in God. This is a creed which is taken from Revelation chapter 1, which is right towards the end of the Bibles. And perhaps it's appropriate that as we come to the end of 2020 and we're moving into 2021, we use these words. 
and they'll appear on your screen in a moment. And please join in with me. And a creed is a way of just declaring what we believe, affirming what is important to us about our trust in God. So let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, the Almighty, who was and is and is to come. We believe in Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the King of Kings, who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood. We believe in the Spirit, giver of many gifts, proceeding from the throne of her on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. encouraged to trust in the Lord rather than relying on our own uh, understanding or even on someone else's understanding so how can we trust the Lord well there are two reasons the first reason we can trust the Lord is because he is good Psalm 119 and and verse 68 uh, says this about God you are good 
and what you do is good. Now then, we use the word good to describe all sorts of things, don't we? You know, I had a good night's sleep. Um, she's a very good friend. Uh, or oh, this steak is, is really good. And all these things are true. Ice cream is good. However, when we say that God is good, we're describing perfect goodness. The very highest level of goodness that there is. God being good means that he is kind, he's loving, he's patient, he's faithful, he's wise, he's beautiful, he's generous, incredible, way beyond the best we have ever experienced here on earth. And not only is God's character good, but the psalmist says that everything that God does is good. Look at God's creation and you can see his goodness. At the moment the sun's shining here on, on my face and um, it's just wonderful. It's God's creation. Look at the things that, the wonderful, wonderful things that, that the Lord did when he walked the earth. And you will see his goodness. People were healed. People were set free, forgiven, encouraged, fed. They were blessed by the Lord's goodness. And you know, not only were people in Jesus' day blessed, but we too are blessed. And that's so wonderful. God has shown us in, in an immense way his goodness by, by coming to earth in the person of Jesus to freely offer us wonderful gifts, salvation, eternal life, forgiveness, freedom, peace, love and joy. Now then, though, saying that God is good does not mean that we won't experience some hard times as Christians. No, sometimes we will go through some very difficult times. We may not even understand why we're going through these tough times, but what we can hold on to is the truth that God's goodness will stay the same. He will be at work in us and through us, working out his good purposes, so we can trust him whatever we go through. That's fine, Jay, but knowing it's good in your head is, is one thing. It's another thing to actually dare to believe and trust that he is good. especially when times are difficult. Sometimes it's hard to just trust. See, I could tell you that chocolate is good, <laughs> very good. But it's another thing to believe me enough to go out and buy yourself a bar of chocolate and try it for yourself. <laughs> Psalm 34 and verse 8 says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Now then, I hope that somewhere near you might have a, a bit of chocolate left over from Christmas. Take one and eat it now. Taste and see that the Lord is good. We need to step out in faith and find the Lord's goodness in our own lives. So, I hope you've got a bit of chocolate, and as you eat it, I hope you really enjoy it. Ask the Lord while you're eating that to take you another step in trusting him in his goodness, particularly this coming year. I'm going to just pray a little prayer. Just pray with me. Father, 
your word says to taste and see that you are good. Help us to take another step in trusting and believing in your goodness this coming year. Help us, Lord, to really have that faith in the depth of your goodness and how you want exactly that for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, we've said that the first reason we can trust the Lord is because he is good. The second reason that we can trust him is because he keeps his promises to us. We all make promises to each other. Some of them we keep and then some of them unfortunately we break. And the impact of a broken promise could be devastating. When I was researching what I was going to say today, I came across this quote. Promises are worse than lies. They make others hope. Hope for something you're not sure you can give. And that sort of underlined to me how hope and trust are very much tied together. To give somebody hope also means that they put their trust in you. Um, and today we're going to think about how God is certain of what he provides for his people. He does know what he can give. And therefore the hope that we have in him doesn't need to be shaken. We can trust him. People have often good reasons for making promises, or certainly reasons anyway. Sometimes things happen that prevent them, that stop them from keeping a promise they've made. And other times, in the heat of the moment, people often make a rash promise that they just there was no hope of them ever keeping. But whatever the reason, when we're let, we're let down by someone, when they fail to deliver on what they've, they've promised, it hurts. And it makes us wonder whether we can trust anybody. But the wonderful thing about God is that not only is he the maker of many promises to people, he's also the ultimate promise keeper. Corinthians, um, the second letter, chapter 1, verse 20, the very first part of that verse says, For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. I'll read that again, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. No matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. So as children of God bought with the blood of his son Jesus, the verse from Corinthians says that all God's promises are yes to us. God is able to answer the promises he's made to us with the word yes because Firstly, he's powerful enough to carry his promises out. There isn't a circumstance that is going to occur that God can't deal with. And secondly, he loves us so much and he's utterly faithful. He won't let us down. He can't let us down. So we can really trust him. So our response, as hard as it might be, is really to dare to take God at his word and believe what he says. Another one of God's big promises is from the book of 1 John and verse 9. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just. He will forgive us our sins and purify us from unrighteousness. That's 1 John 1 verse 9. God's promise to give us a new start, to wipe our slates clean of the wrong things we've done, which is a really great offer at the beginning of a new year. And our part in this is, put simply I guess, to confess when we've not followed God's will for our lives. 
when we've not turned away from doing wrong, to give that to God, to confess our wrongdoing and to make a fresh start with him again. Amen. So now, on this first Sunday of 2021, we think back over the year that has passed, bringing to mind its many challenges, bringing to mind its frustrations and its sadness, but also its joys and the things that we can be thankful for. We also bring to mind our own successes and our own failings. If we bring all these things to mind now, as I say these words of prayer. Unclutter our lives, Lord. We have too much. We consume too much. We expect too much. Grant us perspective to see this world through the eyes of others rather than just our own. Grant us compassion. Where there is need, help us to play our part and not to turn aside. Grant us gratitude for what we have, our daily bread and the gift of life. Unclutter our lives, Lord. Give us space, simplicity and thankful hearts. Amen. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to be. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them be at the end. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my King. Take my lips and let them Take my silver and my gold, not a night would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as you choose. And here am I.
We've been encouraged this morning to make trusting God our New Year's resolution. And we can do this, as Jay's reminded us, because God is good. God is good all of the time and all of the time God is good. And we can also trust him, as Rachel's been telling us, because God never breaks his promises to each one of us. And we're going to use some of God's promises as the basis of our prayers this morning. But let's start our time of prayer by saying together the words of the Lord's Prayer. So let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In Matthew 18, 20, Jesus promises, Where two or three are together in my name, I am there with them. So we thank you, Lord, that you are here with us now. Would you lead us in our prayers? In Matthew 28, 20, Jesus promises, Surely I am with you always, to the very end of my age. We thank you, Lord, for your promise that wherever we are and whatever we are doing this year, you will be with us. We won't be alone. Help us to become more and more aware of your presence. And in the silence, we hold before you someone we know who needs to know that you are with them. Proverbs 3, 6, God promises, In all your ways acknowledge me, and I will make your path straight. We thank you, Lord, that you promise to lead us and bless us if we give our plans to you. Help us this year to spend time with you each day, praying and listening to your small, still voice. And we hold before you now someone that we know who needs your guidance. In Philippians 4.19, Paul promises, And my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you promise to provide for us all that we need. Help us not to waste time worrying this year, but to trust you instead with our needs. And we hold before you now the needs of somebody that we know. In Romans 8, 28, Paul promises, We know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. We thank you, Lord, that we can rely on your promise that whatever we go through this year, you are at work in our lives. Help us to keep our eyes fixed upon you, especially during those stormy and difficult times. And we hold before you now someone we know who is going through a difficult time. For no matter how many promises God are made, they are all yes in Christ. Amen. So as we draw now towards the end of our time together, it's uh, good that we can share what we're looking forward to and what we can hope for in this next year. And hopefully this year, with all that we've been through in the last 10 months and all the good news about the vaccines being uh, brought into, into the, the masses of our population, we pray that it's going to be a better year for us. 
But whatever the outcome, it's important that we do dedicate ourselves to God, that he'll be with us through the good as well as through the not so good. And so we're going to use an act of covenant, which is taken from the free church, often used in a Methodist church, which is a way of committing ourselves to serve God during this year. So I'm going to say some words of introduction first, and then there'll be a, a covenant which we're going to uh, say together, uh, and that will appear on your screens. So in an eternal covenant with Abraham, God called into being a people through whom the world would be blessed. God, through Moses, chose Israel to be a holy nation, to walk before him and to keep his laws. Jeremiah anticipated a new covenant requiring individual knowledge of God and the obedience of faith. Our Lord Jesus Christ, by his incarnation, death and resurrection, has brought God's new covenant to all who are made one by him, with him, by grace through faith. We who are called by his name are pledged to live no more for ourselves, but for him. To obey his commandments and to bear witness to his salvation to the ends of the earth. And so we say together, as a company of men and women who have received Christ as saviour and by grace become God's children, we here and now dedicate ourselves to him. We desire to renew our commitment as a church of Jesus Christ, indwelt by the Holy Spirit, united to walk worthily of our profession, set apart to proclaim his word, to observe his commandments, and to ask God's grace to work according to his will for the salvation of others and the well-being of his world. Amen. And now we're going to use a promise. We just said those words, and this is a promise that, that we're going to follow in his way. So again, I'll lead us in some words, and if you join in with a bold print when it appears on the screen. Lord God, Holy Father, since you have called us through Christ to share in this gracious covenant, we take upon ourselves afresh the yoke of obedience. And for love of you, we engage ourselves in the task of making you known to our neighbours, blessing and serving them in your name. We are no longer our own, but yours. And we say together this promise, I am no longer my own, but yours. Send me where you will, rank with me whom you will. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you, exalted for you, or bought low for you. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. Freely and wholeheartedly, I yield my life and all I possess to your pleasure and disposal. Amen. And now we're going to move into a, a blessing which uh, we're going to receive from God as we, continue, we come to the end of our worship together. Now, having made that covenant and made the promise that we're gonna follow in God's footsteps, Jesus' footsteps to serve him, we're going to dedicate ourselves and then receive God's blessing. And so some words of dedication will appear on the screen. Uh, and we say together, Father, we dedicate ourselves to serve you faithfully and to follow Christ, to face the future with him, seeking his special purpose for our lives. Send us out to work and to witness freely, gratefully and hopefully in the power of the Holy Spirit and for the honour and glory of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so we receive God's blessing. As you go into this new year to live for the Lord's glory, go knowing that you can trust him, for he is good and he keeps his promises. And the blessing God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>